Danny and Gigi. What's up, guys? I'm so uh, grateful to be able to speak to you guys alongside Gigi tonight. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to share my screen real quick. I uh, got a few slides for y'all. Nothing too crazy. Nothing too crazy. Um, can y'all see that? Get a thumbs up. Nice. Okay, cool. Um, but yeah, I'm glad to be speaking to you guys just on discipline, being organized, doing well in school, working hard, all that good stuff, you know? Um, I know everybody is like so excited. Um, but, you know, I think <clears throat> for many of us, the semester has just kind of gotten started. And uh, whether or not you are good in this area of being disciplined and working hard, I'm sure that God is already testing you um, to, to grow in this. And so whether or not it's your strength, um, I think God calls us all to work hard and be disciplined, especially when it comes to academics or other things in life. And just a little background about myself, because uh, I think when I talk to a lot of different people, they just kind of assume that this is how I've always been, uh, that I've always been so, you know, about school, uh, that I've been super disciplined my whole life from birth, um, and that, you know, I've never had an issue with it. But honestly, it's been the opposite. Um, when I, throughout, basically all up through even to middle school, I didn't care about school at all. Uh, not a single bit. I didn't, you know, uh, have any aspirations or any dreams. I wasn't like, oh, I want to do this for sure. Um, I didn't really, I don't know, middle school is a little early, but, you know, I, I didn't care, you know. Um, and so it wasn't until my freshman year of high school that I actually, you know, really things kind of switched around and changed for me. And it was because I, I became a disciple. I got baptized um, and I realized that I needed to grow in this area. I can just not care about um, something like school, something so important. And now God has seriously just transformed me. Um, I feel like a completely different person. Um, obviously it's been so many years and it's become more of my character. But, uh, you know, I ended up, I studied mechanical engineering. I graduated this past spring and, you know, finished with a, a great GPA. Um, I even tu tutored on like, you know, physics classes, all of the math, basically classes you could go through. Um, and I'm working at an incredible job now. And so I feel like it's all because of God. Um, God has completely changed that area, changed that in me, uh, that area. And so I'm sure many of you, um, believe that time management is an important skill uh, and desire to grow uh, in, in it, but probably wrestle with the motivation or just how to get started in general. And so hopefully through the scriptures tonight and the different practicals that Gigi and I are going to be sharing, we can help uh, direct you guys in that area. I want to start by reading uh, 1 Corinthians 9. It says, to the weak, I became weak to win the week. I have become all things to all people so that by all possible means, I might save some. I do this for the sake of the gospel that I may share in its blessings. Do you not know that in a race, all the runners run, but only one gets the prize. Run in such a way as to get the prize. Everyone who competes in the games goes into strict training. They do it to get a crown that will not last, but we do it to get a crown that will last forever. Therefore, I do not run like someone running aimlessly. I do not fight like a boxer beating the air. No, I strike a blow to my body and make it my slave so that after I have preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified for the prize. And this, this is an important illustration Paul is making here, right? He's talking about uh, how he strikes a blow to his body and he makes it his slave. I have no doubt in my mind that Paul was in control of himself and was a self-disciplined person. Like that was a part of who Paul was. And when it comes to being self-disciplined, he really highlights the heart or the purpose behind it. And so that kind of leads into the first point here, which is to run with purpose and highlighting, focusing on God and the lost. And without purpose in regards to self-discipline, you're gonna be fighting against the wind. It's really gonna be an uphill battle. The why am I doing this serves not just, to, not just to give you direction, but passion behind the thing you're actually working towards. 
thinking, think about the illustration that, you know, he's talking about here in this verse, a runner running a race. If you're just running and you don't actually have a goal in mind, or you don't have a distance that you're trying to run, odds are nine out of a hundred out of a hundred times, you're going to reach that goal because you don't have a goal. It's nothing. You're going to meet, you're going to meet that, that, uh, standard every time because you set the bar so low. And when it comes to something like this, like doing well in a class or balancing ministry, work, home, and just fun, without a sense of direction, you'll either fall short in one of those areas or you're going to burn yourself out easily. And so what is our purpose for being self-disciplined with life? And this scripture kind of highlights it pretty clearly. I think the first thing it talks about I'll go back here. It says, um, I'm going to jump down. It says that we do it to get a crown that will last forever. And the first purpose is you're running for a kingdom mindset. You're running for a crown that's going to last forever. You're doing it for God. And then secondly, it says that we might save some, right? You're doing it to save others for other people. So with this first mindset, you're doing it for God first. Whether it comes to your classes or your job, your interactions with your parents, or just being a part of the church, our drive and passion should stem from our desire to do it for God, for God first. I think of uh, Colossians 3, verse 22 here. It says, whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for human masters, since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward. It is the Lord Christ you are serving. And this is such a great passage when it comes to self-discipline. See, imagine it was God who assigned you that five-page paper you have to do, or it was Jesus asking you to restock the shelves at your job. How would you respond? How would you act? What would be going through your head? You know, what would be different about your actions if it was Jesus doing, if it was Jesus asking you to do it. And I know that this idea isn't necessarily a new concept for many, but I think it can be so easy for us to kind of get in this negative mindset when it comes to doing things like that. It's easy for us to complain when it comes to a, a, when we're thinking about a professor, right? It's like, oh, why did they, why do they have to assign all these assignments, right? Why do I have to do a paper? And then I got to study for a test and then I got to do this right? It's easy to complain when it comes to the professor or about a boss, you know? Why does the boss have to, you know, talk down to me all the time or something? It's easy to do that. Or even when it comes to our parents, you know, it can be easy to, um, to think in that negative mindset. But would you still be complaining if it was literally God who asked you to complete that task? If it was literally God that asked you in those assignments to do those assignments, would you still be complaining? And too often we think about these different facets of our life and we compartmentalize each life, right? Instead of seeing that I shouldn't just work hard when it comes to, you know, getting that 4.0, but also when my mom is talking to me or asking me to do something or when a coworker is talking down to me. It's all about perspective. And if you're able to have a Christ in front of your vision, in front of, in in your perspective, he will push you farther in those tasks. You're going to do, you're going to work harder at those tasks than you would otherwise. And likewise, us working hard in these areas isn't just to make it that much harder, but it's actually setting such an example for those around you. That other scripture we looked at in 1 Corinthians was talking about how it's, it's to save some, that we might save some people. And think about this, right? Would you respect someone uh, who was telling you about how incredible it is to follow Jesus, and yet they were failing all of their classes? Would you? Or would it, would you, would it be hard for you to take advice on your character from someone who was rude to their parents. I mean, would you, would you take, I wouldn't, I wouldn't respect that person. I wouldn't want to get advice from that person if I see them talking back to their parents. And I'm sure you guys can think of other scenarios, but it's, it's that our example 
permeates society. People see our example. The key is that whether or not you like it, as disciples, we are lights to the world. People are going to look at your character. They're going to look at your integrity. They're going to look at your discipline. And now this doesn't mean that you need to be perfect and have life all figured out and know the answer to all the issues ever. But it does mean that for the sake of saving some, for the sake of your friends and making Jesus known, we can't just run aimlessly. We need to beat our bodies, make it our slaves, make it obedient to us and run with purpose. And uh, now Gigi's gonna come up and share more about our purpose. All right, hey guys. So tonight I have the absolute honor of sharing with Manny, the Manny Coronado, um, about self-discipline, organization, and studying. So to start us off, I wanted to share a story. Um, so there once was a young girl whose time management skills were non-existent. She lived every moment with a, I don't need to write this down, I'll remember it later. Or I just function better going with the flow kind of mentality, which was a terrible idea. It never worked. She would miss doctor appointments, meetings of the body, assignments, her time with her discipling partner, and even her job taking care of other people's kids. She was a hot mess. Her life was filled with chaos and filled to the brim with responsibility she had forgotten she committed to. And if you haven't put one and one together, that was me. I was that girl. <laughs> I completely was lost. Um, and only through God, Jesus, and the people around me willing to tell me the truth have I grown in this area. A scripture shared with me at that time was Ephesians 5, 14 through 17. Um, it says, this is why it is said, wake up, sleeper, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. I don't know about you guys, but this scripture brought me to action. It woke me up to the realization that my days on this earth are so limited. And I had the decision to make the most of every opportunity or be selfish and let my laziness creep in and rule my life. And in 1 Corinthians 14, it says, for God is not a God of disorder, but of peace. And peace is what I longed for because the disorder in my life was suffocating. It was killing me very slowly and surely. And I just couldn't live my life like this anymore. I started planning, setting reminders, and communicating with people better in my life, dedicating my life to God and bringing him glory. But let's be real, as time went on, I started to get exasperated with all of the responsibilities piling in my calendar and all of the different colors that I saw on my sheet was driving me crazy. And on top of that, the surprise interruptions that ruined my perfect plans. Um, I just wanted to ask who here by a show of hands can be overwhelmed with all of the inconveniences of life while planning? Me, I would, everyone, <laughs> you know, it could be really chaotic and really crazy. Um, because, sorry, I just lost my voice. Um, but yeah, me too. <laughs> and the scripture that really helps me and go, that I go back to is in Exodus 18, 17 through 23. And it says, you and these people who come to you will only wear yourselves out. The work is too heavy for you. You cannot handle it alone. This right here is what really deeply encourages me and keeps me going. That God is the only way that I can live a life of purpose without wearing myself out. A perfect person who demonstrates this in his life is Jesus. When we go look back on Sunday service, when Rob was sharing in Mark, his life was full of chaos, craziness, but yet he had a schedule. He had a set time where he had times with God, teaching, healing, and resting. And although all of the random people who came up to him begging him to heal him, begging for miracles, 
he was able to roll with the punches while maintaining his purpose in life. And that amazes me and convicts me to live my life the same way. Am I perfect? Absolutely not. <laughs> Will I always mess up and sometimes let my laziness slip in? Of course. But I think the main thing to look at is really just to look at Jesus's life and how he did things for God, because God was very pleased with him. And he wants to be pleased with us too, in the way that we represent who he is. And I love how tonight we get to look at time management and self-discipline um, because we're not only just going to be talking about the heart, we're also being able to have the idea of some practicals that you can use in your life. And I'm going to pass it back to Manny so he can start us off with some of the practicals that we can actually use in this chaotic world. Um, so, yeah. Thank you, Gigi. That was great. So good. Um, yeah, so we definitely wanted to this to be practical. So, you know, you guys are going to take some stuff away here. I'm sure you'll find something that works for you. Um, so our next point is just now run, right? And that same idea of running the race. So we're going to start out with a few different topics. I think first and the best place to start when it comes to this is creating a schedule. And so these are just some tips and tricks that help, help me when creating a schedule. Gigi and I are both gonna show you guys our schedule, just what it looks like um, and things that help us along the way. But first is identifying the priorities, right? You, you, know, you might have a ton of things you need to do each week. Um, a lot of times I like to, you know, I'm always putting stuff in even if it's further, but each week I try to look at the be beginning of the week what my schedule is going to look like, just so I have an idea of the things I need to accomplish this week. Um, but I identified the main priorities, whether it's getting time with somebody or, you know, different things like that, meeting, like going to Sunday services, midweeks, devos. I have those implanted in my body. I mean, not my body, in my schedule and in my body too. My body knows when I'm going, <laughs> but like, you know, I have it constantly on my schedule. They're reoccurring. Um, and they're obviously super important. If it's work, that too, classes, you know, making sure you know what the priorities are. And then obviously the frequency, like I said, you know, how often do they occur? You know, maybe it's something that happens every other week. You know, it's not maybe something that's every all the time, um, but something that's that's uh, less frequent. I also, I would say optimizing tasks is key. Um, seeing how you can really maximize your schedule for instance, right, if you're coming into New York City for something, maybe you can get time with that brother or sister or somebody that you're, um, you've been trying to do for the longest, you know, if you're already going to be in the city, trying to do stuff like that. Um, or maybe you can, if you need a, you know, you said you're going to work out, maybe you can take somebody along with you if you also need to get time with them. I've done that plenty of times. Maybe we're going to go work out together or go to the gym or play basketball or something like that. So try to optimize your tasks, see what you can, you can link together. That helps a ton. Following up with people constantly. Um, a lot of times, you know, for you, something might be urgent for that other person. It may not be urgent, but you know, you can make it more urgent if you just keep following up with somebody. I'll say, I think of the, the persistent widow, you know, I'm just going to bug somebody. I'm going to keep bugging them. You know, if I really want something to happen, you know, if I'm trying to get time with somebody or, you know, I'm trying to trying to do something. Um, I'm, you're going to hear about it. So um, and don't be afraid. Don't feel, you know, um, like, oh, I don't want to bother that person or, you know, I don't want to bug them too much. Um, you know, if you really feel passionately about something, um, I think, you know, you, you should you should really make that extra step, you know, go that extra mile. Um, next is just scheduling in breaks. Um, you can actually just put it into your schedule if that helps you, but making sure you're doing fun things throughout the week, things that you enjoy. If you enjoy, you know, basketball or something so that your, your week isn't just work, 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 you know, and then you have no, and then sleep and eating, you know, but you have time to do things that you actually enjoy and that kind of keep you going. Um, also being reali realistic with your time. Don't overpromise on certain things. Um, I think that could be really easy. Gigi is going to talk about that a little bit more. Um, stick to it. 
uh, with the last thing, sticking to your schedule and being flexible. I know it's like kind of a contradiction, but if you can stick to your schedule as much as possible and then realizing the things you can be flexible in, that'll help you a ton. Um, so this is my schedule. Uh, on the left here, I have my schedule from when I was in classes. And then on the right, this is my schedule literally from like last week. Um, and so you can kind of see on the left with my classes, I color coordinated, you know, you got to do that. I mean, you don't have to, but I would say that I think Jesus would probably color coordinate. Um, I'm not going to say any, call out anybody, <clears throat> Caleb, <clears throat> who doesn't color coordinate. I would say that you're probably, something's a little off there, but you know, um, anyway, anyway. <laughs> so, but yeah, so the red is like my church events, that kind of stuff sticks out to me um, when I'm looking at my schedule. And I know that stuff is reoccurring a lot of times, like midweek, Sunday services, devos. I have my, you know, my classes all put in there. Um, and I even have, as you can see on like Thursday, at the end of the day, I had like, you know, I had a, a test the next day for my multi-variable class. And I had a review session that I was putting in and stuff like that. I was also a part of, I was a board member on a club um, while at this time. And, you know, I had the meetings um, there and as also put in. You can be super detailed when it comes to creating your schedule. You could put in travel time. You can put in anything you want. I think the key is creating something that works for you and sticking with it, you know, um, and making sure you're constantly updating it. So definitely, um, you know, make sure you're on top of your schedule and you know what it's like. On the right, you know, this is just to show you guys what, what I had um, while working, you know. Um, but, you know, obviously work is in red and is every day. And then I have the times where I'm meeting people in blue and things like that. Um, you know, again, it, things are going to change. You're going to be, you might have more things certain weeks, might look more chaotic and might be more spread out on certain, certain other weeks. Um, but this is just a framework for you guys to kind of reference. Um, you know, figure out what works for you. But um, that's basically it. Now Gigi's gonna come on and, and share a little bit of her schedule and things like that. So this is my schedule. Um, you know that thing where people say like, if you have an iPad, you have your life together. It 1000% works because after an iPad, I feel just so much better. Um, but yeah, very similarly with the color coordination, I have to see different colors just so, cause my brain can just like determine, um, that's it. Sorry if you hear my brother. Um, if you, it just helps determine what I'm looking at instantly. Um, so here I like coordinated my times with people, um, in purple and I made sure that I had a family time. D time with Chelsea or like D group um, and uh, just my times with people in general. And then blue is in school. Um, green are my study times um, slash homework times. I really don't have a lot on there yet, but I, it has to be on there. I have a to work to do list too. Um, but yeah, I have like a lot of different things. Um, it helps me a lot to schedule my time with my family, if that makes any sense. I feel like most of us living in the city live at home. If not, you guys are lucky, but um, you know, not that, anyway, um, hope my parents don't like watch. Anyway, but I like perfectly had to like set time with my family because there are just instances where they're like, where are you? You are never at home. Like, do you even live here anymore? Um, so I had to make sure that I give enough time for the ministry, for school, and for family, which can be really chaotic. Um, but it's such an importance and able to have that because otherwise, like, I don't know, I think it's just missing something. And we want to be able to be a light wherever we go. And that includes our family as well. Um, and so, yeah, that's just a little bit about that. I'm also supposed to be talking about the topic of saying no which is a huge issue for me because I am a complete people pleaser and don't know how to say no to anybody. Um, but I am currently learning how saying no is such a priority in our lives because if we just keep piling on, we're just gonna get worn out and it'll be okay for us to not always say yes. In fact, there's a scripture in Ecclesiastes 3 where it says there is a time for everything. 
and a season for every activity under the heavens, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to uproot. There is a time for everything. Um, and we just have to remember that most of us are full-time students, <laughs> you know? We cannot always be partying till like 3 a.m. Um, and then go to school the next day and not expect to be tired. Um, so we just have to be very mindful and just know that, you know, Jesus said yes to things, but he also said no to certain things as well. Um, so yeah, that's just a little bit of what I was going to be sharing about. Um, I hope you like my little handwritten stuff. It helps me be stable. Um, I come here in my calendar to de-stress. And so I like to make it as aesthetically pleasing as I can so I don't look or feel crazy. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna pass it back to um, Manny for the rest of our little thing. Thanks, Gigi. So great. Um, we're making a joke that I think that Jesus would definitely be have a cat like a schedule if he was, you know, and he would have an iPad 100%. Um, and he would be doing all the like fancy cursive stuff that you see he'd be like you know he'd be going in I could totally see Jesus doing that um but uh so this last thing we're going to talk about real quick is just how to study or how to excel I think a lot of times we just don't even know where to start or we're trying to build these habits um I'll tell you what works for me may not work for you completely um but you got to figure out what what you know things you can take away from it um, first I'll say is just knowing your learning style. Um, that's key, uh, is, you know, some people learn differently. Maybe you're a visual learner. Maybe you're a hands-on learner. Maybe you just learn by like, just straight up, like white knuckling it in like memorization or something. Um, everybody's different. You know, uh, I, I definitely didn't learn that much when I was actually just sitting in class, but I had to learn a lot like after class of like, I was doing a lot of back end, you know, looking at videos and things like that. Um, it's just cause I couldn't like completely focus all the time unless it was example problems, you know, but that works for me, that worked for me. I figured out, you know, the routine with it. Um, next is setting a regular study time for yourself. Uh, a lot of times um, I would study on Sunday nights that tended to work best, like after church and, you know, hanging out with people, I'd come back and, you know, just kind of grind through that week's work or whatever I needed to do. But, you know, figuring out what works for you. Um, and, you know, maybe that's not the best, or maybe you're a morning person, you, you function better in the morning. Um, but whatever you do, set a regular time and try to stick with it. Um, next is eliminating distractions. Uh, I have, I know so many people that I'll be texting and they'll be like, yeah, I'm like doing an assignment. And I'm like, why are you texting me then <laughs> if you're doing an assignment? I think a lot of times people, um, it's just so easy to get wrapped up. You know, you check your phone here and there and then you, um, and then you just kind of are on YouTube or Instagram or something for like way too long. Um, but I try to turn off my phone or I put it on mute or do not disturb uh, whenever I'm studying or I'm like going to get going on work. Um, it, it can wait. You know, I'll say that most of the things that people want to talk to you about, it can probably wait a little bit. Um, and then also I'll say to reward yourself. Um, you definitely don't want to just like put yourself through a bunch of like pain um, with like studying and all this stuff and um, not like reward yourself. Sometimes I would reward myself with some candy, um, got a little sweet tooth. Sometimes I reward myself with, you know, playing basketball for a little bit or something like that, or, you know, watching an episode of a TV show, you know, yes, with the candy emoji, <laughs> Mark, um, you know, it's figuring out what works and, you know, what kind of motivates you a little bit. Um, but I think rewarding yourself is a big, um, it helps, it helps mo like push yourself through the next part of it. Um, and then also uh, practicing constantly. Um, I think... Again, that kind of ties into knowing your learning style, but I think at the same time, there are a lot of times where I just had to like practice, practice, practice certain problems. Um, I had to do it until I actually understood what was happening, you know, especially with certain topics that I didn't really get. Um, you know, you just got to keep doing it. You got to push and keep, keep practicing. Next is um, 
this idea of the Pomodoro, Pomodoro technique. Um, if you haven't heard of it, it's basically like a few minutes on and then a few minutes off. So you're, you're going to study for, you know, 45 minutes and then you take a 15 minute break or 50 minutes in a 10 minute break. I think that's, that's key. You know, um, there were, there would be some moments where I would just kind of keep pushing, um, for like four hours or something without taking a break. Um, and I definitely felt the toll on my body afterwards, you know, but I think the times that I did take a break, like little breaks, even, um, just to like, not look at my screen that helped me the most. Um, and so I definitely recommend, you know, doing that if you can. And then lastly, is just ask a ton of questions. Like I said before, you know, I was a tutor um, when I was in school and there were a lot of times, you know, people would come to me with a bunch of different questions, you know, things that they were like, I think that this is kind of simple, but, you know, I'm going to ask it anyway. And I think the most, the, the, there's no question that's, you know, you feel like it's too small uh, that you can ask. Ask anybody you can, ask the professors, try to get time with the professors if you can. Um, ask somebody that you know is, has taken that class before or, you know, can really help you in this area. There's no shame in that and it'll help you so much more and you'll be a lot less stressed in the end. Um, so I hope this was helpful, guys. Um, that's everything um, we have for you now. I don't know.